And now for our weekly news segment. All right. Hey, who's this schmuck who's <laughs> complaining about being... It's the well narrow guy. I timed it out because he was just spamming useless comments. And now uh, he's joining with uh, like a bajillion accounts, just spamming... All right, so productive need, time. like pointlessly, um, dude, or jump up on the show. Like if you're, you're you know, you're, you're not yeah, bad. Come on the show, buddy. Oh, Get no, on no. up here. You don't need to turn your camera on, but just don't waste our time and waste everybody's uh, spamming a bunch of shit. All right. All right go ahead. So first article, Iris extends comments period for new crypto tax rule to mid-November. The proposal is supposed to come into effect 2026, impacting sales and exchanges in 2025. The U.S. IRS has extended the commentary period for crypto tax reporting rules proposed in August 2023. The public consultation will last until November 13th. The gross proceeds and basis reporting by brokers and determination of amount realized and basis for digital asset tr transactions rules were made public on the 29th. Under the regulations, brokers will need to adopt novel reporting form to streamline tax emissions and reduce instances of tax evasion. So just more trying to get people to pay tax with their crypto. And this happens along with uh, Kraken being forced to give up a bunch of information by the IRS. So, yeah, any comments? Not really. I, I, I guess, <laughs> I guess I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think now. that decentralized exchanges might be the way to go, but I don't know. Don't, I mean, I'm on the fence. Don't switch into fiat, um, because if you don't switch into fiat, <laughs> there's uh, nothing to tax. No, I like to keep my value. Yes, I if I remember correctly, the rules are if it's if you're if you're going back to fiat, pulling in your bank account, that's a taxable event. If you're exchanging crypto, it's taxable. But I think if you're actually withdrawing, it's not. Like if you're withdrawing to a wallet, I don't think it is taxable. No, so. it's not, it's not a taxable event, but they they'll consider it a taxable event until you prove otherwise. I think essentially is what happens. So like if sounds about right. Yeah. All right. right. You, got, you got to prove that it wasn't a spend that you're just moving it to your own wallet. So, uh, Tom Emmer, uh, I think you shared this one, Doug. Uh, you probably have more idea on this one than I do. Yeah, I just wanted to bring it up because Tom Emmer, he yeah, it looked like he was going to get the house speaker, right? Yeah, he almost became the speaker, which would have been exciting because he's the most. If, if there's anybody out there that's in, in the you know U.S. representative that could potentially be pro Monero, it's this guy, although he never really mentions Monero. Um, but he always talks about the importance of cash and digital cash. He understands that concept uh, like no other U.S. representative. So it would have been would have been awesome to have him in there as the the U.S. Uh, House Speaker. But he quickly got derailed. <laughs> um, I think he, like his bid lasted for like two hours, and then like uh, he had the the kind of uh, the more extreme arm of the Republican Party. Uh, come after him because I think he had um, confirmed the election when Biden was elected as opposed to being one of those people that was uh, denying the, the results of the election. So that's what he got killed off for. But it would have been awesome, amazing to have him in that seat. Um, unfortunately not. But he's a cool guy. Keep an eye on him. Would love to have him on the show. Um, yeah. Moving we said on. we get the snake. Mike Johnson, who immediately is uh trying to shovel money to other countries which is great and unsurprising but unfortunate so uh from fiat demise monero donations lead to uh lead the crypto pack one day to jeff berwick's fundraisers this is for the uh Acapulco hurricane relief this group punches way above its weight in generosity so this is what we're talking about earlier with the hurricane look at that monero That's wow that, that is amazing fucking darrow dude <laughs> oh, yeah, 200 not even 200 bucks in there i mean that's like the I whole small. i didn't even know there was 200 bucks in circulation in Dara. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah i had a bunch of darrow people uh commenting telling me uh like trying to promote darrow whatever um, conceptually it's great but i i don't think it actually works i think okay. it's kind of a... and i am curious so if any darrow people wanted to uh come and give their opinion that would be interesting because i am i'm cu always curious about new I don't think all of us are. This is like the general Monero sentiment that we're curious about other products. Yeah, for sure. But I don't I think, know if Monero is actually like, you know, usable. 
Nope. Yeah, I mean, if you if you look at if you do like donation divided by market cap, right? So like Monero is it's is crazy by far yeah. the top, right? So forty grand worth of Monero has been donated uh, versus what was it like eight thousand? Oh, forty four now versus twelve thousand versus twelve thousand in Bitcoin, right? So yeah, uh, what does that say? I think. You know, I think it's that. it's it's a testament to the fact that people actually use Monero, right? Especially for something like this. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna send money, if I'm gonna donate, if I'm gonna actually transact with it, I'm gonna use Monero. I'm not gonna use my I'm not Monero's gonna... cheap. You're saving the most amount of money using Monero. Yeah. Exactly. Most of most of the money goes to the person who's getting it. So I think I had mentioned to you guys on a different show about uh, getting stuff to Hawaii during the the nightmare, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were talking about, well, you can send gift cards because they're actually getting through. Um, and it was hard to rally people to use Monero to do it. But the irony is, is my Monero got there in like, well, you know, 10 minutes. <laughs> they were able to use it like right away. And then uh, we shipped several pallets of stuff down to help with the fires in Hawaii. And I think they ended up getting it like a month and a half later. And some people, you know, had allegedly, I'm not saying this actually happened, but allegedly uh, neither confirmed nor denied. People had also put like cash and gift cards and envelopes inside of the pallets. I mean, who knows if that's true or not, but like, but those things didn't get to them for almost two months. Right. Um, and, and the thing is, is like, the humanitarian aspect of what Monero brings to the table is so unbelievably underrated right now. And it would be a huge marketing thing, right? So right now you've got two sides like yay Palestine or yay Israel and burn other guy down, right? Well, you could be talking to one guy about how, you know, humanitarian aid has been denied to Palestine, but you could easily use Monero and then you could be talking to somebody else and you can be like, you know, all of these people who have lost power at the shelters or whatever, well, you can use, you know, network services and your cell phone to transact in Monero, right? It's it, like no matter which side you're on, no matter which side somebody else is on, you can always appeal to the humanitarian instincts of a person by showing them what Monero is capable of doing. And honestly, like it would be awesome to get posters of these made, right? Like donations Agreed. made to Acapulco. And then you could show like the value in all of the crypto. And then you could show all of the nonprofit donations and whatever. And then uh, days before it saw results or made it to the hands of the, you know, Monero, 10 minutes, you know, FEMA, 612 years, you know, or what it's like, yeah. <laughs> you could make such an amazing propaganda poster out of this. If you were an artist, which I'm not, but somebody out there, I'll buy one. If you make it. <laughs> yeah, I would too. All I like right. It. This one's interesting. Last week, a Wall Street Journal published a report citing elliptic research to claim that Hamas has raised as much as $93 million prior to their terror attack in Israel. This was seized upon by Senator Warren, who cited the report in a letter criticizing crypto with over 100 congressional signers. People in crypto knew that this figure was shocking and had to have been overstated. Within days, Chainalysis came out with a post explaining the basic error in the data. If a rogue exchange with $10 million in volume sends 1,000 to Hamas, you can't count that as $10 million to Hamas. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Today, Elliptic, the sole source of the 93 million figure, has unequivocally said the research is being misrepresented. No way. <laughs> yeah, the company oh, also said that they've been trying to explain this to Senator Warren's <laughs> office and the original Wall Street Journal reporters. So what now? Does the truth of reach DC? Well, we can try Mm. Yeah, we we, we oh spoke about God. this last week too. It's and, uh, informative and unfortunate. For one minute, that these people don't know that it wasn't ninety three million dollars and that they're full of shit. Like it's a, we're trying to tell them that they're wrong. It's you don't say. But the thing is, is these people have like hundreds of you know. I, I'm like literally working with senators right now, and the thing is, is they have teams of like a hundred people to you know do all of the homework and bring them just the hundred retards. Yeah, it's and the thing is, is they'll get all of the info and then they'll just pretend like they haven't seen it and start, you know, hammering on the talking points that are like provably wrong. 
They know. Of course they know. <laughs> Unbelievable. This this guy is still spamming. What is what is wrong with this individual? What guy? I didn't see anything. In the in the in the comments. No, I see him, but endless, I don't see him. Endless, endless, endless. Dude, push me. Come on, dude. Come on. There's dude. nothing wrong with him spamming. It's only pushing the reach. So that's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we appreciate that's it. That's true. That's a good point. But uh, yeah, hop honestly, on. we should probably cut him oh. in. We should be like, wow, thanks for all of the active promotions. I think <laughs> yeah. it's the wow, come on the show. Guy, he's just like probably yeah. drunk. It yeah, no, it's it's the one hour guy. Yeah, yeah I was like, twelve once, but like, uh, the, the thing is that Arctic Mine indeed made some very good points about chain analysis, basically being semi bullshit and not not really mm. being all that great at what they do but that you know it kind of makes them even more dangerous because it, it can easily wind up in innocent people um you know getting arrested over a, a miscalculation something as retarded as what they did here so all the more reason to use monero i mean unproven black box algorithms that the yeah. government uses to apply air quote justice love it the orb <sighs> says you're guilty. Yeah, exactly. But pretty crazy that 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 they're even coming out and be like, wait, wait a minute, you're you're miss. You're yeah, ninety three million dollars because they they benefit they're they're benefiting as as the government amps up regulation, right? If Senator Warren's bill passes, uh, elliptic and chain analysis mm. actually, you know, they they stand to benefit great. And quote justice. And here they are. They're out there like, wait a minute, you can't, you know, even you guys, you're going a little overboard. You're. We're, we're not saying that, that is kind of funny yeah. yeah all right turkey plans to craft crypto framework in 2024 2024 turkish presidential annual program published on october 25th in the official gazette of the republic of turkey aims to finalize crypto regulations in the country in the calendar of 2024 so uh crypto is becoming more regu regulated in turkey time for a roach coin anyway uh, good for them, I guess. Um, Did you just say Roach coin? No, no I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> that <was> awesome. <laughs> I didn't say anything. For those of you who don't know, be glad that you don't know because you okay. have no business being on those places <laughs> on the internet anyway. So I had the feeling you would know. Let's come on. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll keep that among you guys. <laughs> Bank of Spain. Yeah, the after hours show that is not broadcast on YouTube may feature more jokes like this. You guys. Yeah, maybe, maybe oh, we uh, need like, Monero to Oh, we, yeah, Monerotopia after, after hours. hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for just just that. Alaska non and whoever else wants to do it. I will absolutely host the after hours yeah. and I'll put a disclaimer. Do an Odyssey Douglas or something. Truman does not endorse this in any <laughs> conceivable way. Odyssey or PeerTube or something. Why not? You, you, you won't stream it though, right? Like it's just you could come into a no, room. It'll be live and we'll, we'll invite Mr. Roy. We, we well could host a PeerTube like he's talking about. I mean, most of these like five letter agencies and three letter agencies don't even know how to use that stuff. So we could just the nine people in the Monero community. Who actually are just like <laughs> making roach jokes and stuff? What is this one? Tux. Thank you, Spain. Of Spain embraces digital Europe, explains its benefits. Yeah, Spain with CBDC stuff. Um, all these countries slowly. I'm all for it because it's CBDC. free free advertising for Monero. In a way, yeah, if we can get the word out there. Or else they will fall into the CBTC trap. Oh wait, yeah, and, th and that's where they're talking about. If you go back, um, right? We, well, we talked about this last week. The authors highlight the possibility of offline oh, payments, yeah, offline payments. In the euro, emphasizing its mm -hmm. level of privacy equivalent to cash. So they're proposing a system where you're going to be able to transact offline with digital payments. Speaking uh, of which, press X to doubt. Whatever happened to Fediment? I know, I know, it was kind of a not not a very functional thing, but conceptually, it, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. I've been following that. You know, I one I I was like burning with stuff to chime in on, as as an Alaskan on does, while Comrade Blinn was doing his thing because like that that would actually be a huge chunk of the underlying infrastructure for much more convenient and consistent ways to pay offline and to air gap and all of these other things. Um, like the idea of having like, you know, hardware pocket wallets 
that use a system of QR codes and cameras to air gap connect, you know, to air gap the keys to your wallet. Um, you know, that, that is, that has deployable functionality for all kinds of other things involving like offline transactions. Yeah. Um, like, like I, yeah. I think so, one thing that's possible is like you, you can sign a transaction and then hand it to somebody and they can then broadcast it at some point to the blockchain. But I, I think there's like a lot of issues with, uh, like validity and stuff, uh, like something may happen. You may, you may spend those coins before he gets to, 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 you know, um, broadcast the sign transaction you gave him and all that stuff. Well, all you would have to do is just build it in. I mean, just like the way that a PGP key works, all you'd have to do is build it in where if somebody took it offline and then they spend it offline, it's <clears throat> built into the chain. Uh, it's, 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 or what I mean is, is it's built into the same key as the original, right? Um, but there are ways to like irreversible mathematics. There are ways to true, do true. it. You know, uh, I, I mean, I they're, they're not integrated like with Monero's code base now, but it's not only like feasible, but it, it would just be one math problem. It'd be a yeah, big true, true. problem, but it'd just be one. Just be, being able to give somebody like a tiny piece of hardware that may, maybe with a USB or with, like you said, a QR code, you give that to somebody and they then have, I don't know, five Monero or whatever. That, that, that would be beautiful. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep going, keep going. All right. More CBDC. Chinese digital yuan CBDC used for first time to settle cross-border oil deal. CBDC and de-dollarization saw major strides last week with the 1 million barrel deal on the Shanghai Petroleum and Natural it's Gas Exchange. I saw less there. So fucking liberty champ. You know, what's absolutely hilarious is all of these people three years ago, five years ago, well, yeah, Monero is a great idea, but how am I going to buy my gas? How am I going to get my food? How am I going to pay my taxes? And I'm always like, well, don't pay your taxes for one, but for two, yeah, it's like, and now the governments are like, hey, we want to be able to buy oil, guys. We want to be able to pay taxes, guys. It's, it's only like, cool when we do it. Yeah, it's cool when we do it. It's okay now. <laughs> When you're large and you're in charge and you own the system and then you, you, you love the status quo. Exactly. Yeah. Welcome so to you... the system. Everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white. It hates you all. Tom McDonald, the system. It's an awesome song. If you haven't heard it. Nice. I can't recall the song, but I do recall the, the quote. So next we passport. have some yeah. bounties for passport to Monero. So there's, um, Lots of people who have talked about wanting Monero support for the Passport because the Passport is really, really nice hardware, but it's uh, only supports Bitcoin, as far as I understand. So there's been talk about Monero. And so one of the developers, not on developer time, set up this repository and did some, I guess, rudimentary work to see what it would be like for awesome. sitting up Monero and Passport. And so he's created a bunch of bounties. So if you have the means to do this and you want to, I think this is mostly in C. C, yeah, a little Python for the interface, I guess. And you want to get paid for it. There's some pretty large bounties here. Create Monero seeds, 5XMR. Keep this open. Export private view key 2XMR. So What's if you want to do that, there's some work that can be MGG done. MGG Foundation. Paid. Hurry up before Luke or Blinn find this. You're not going to have any... <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh, nice, Brindley. You can jump on that. That's cool. I'm, I'm at least going to look around. Maybe I can help. Nice. Tweet from Seth about the Ledger Recover. Please do not use a service. If you use a service, if you sign up for simple seizure of funds, if Ledger willingly or unwilling due to government pressure, oh decides to collaborate with one of the other storage providers. And somebody had actually asked this in a Reddit thread. They were like, you know, play devil's advocate if subpoena was issued to Ledger. Uh, what would they do? And he was like, yeah, if the government could subpoena, then they could get access to your funds. How so, is it even a hardware wallet anymore at this point? It's, yeah, no, it's it's insane. Uh, it completely takes away all the, the main benefit. The main benefit is probably protecting it from the government because you are more likely to have that seized by the government than by uh, a thief, to be honest. Uh, and 
they're just given the keys back to them basically th- you know takes a longer time what right? a, great a much idea. a much longer means because getting a subpoena and having that go through usually takes a while it's funny because but... i actually thought about maybe getting a ledger and then i heard about this and yeah yeah no, no it's honestly nope. like i see Cancel no order. advantage to not just using a trusted open source wallet on a graphene phone like i can like all of these hardware wall or not all no excuse me there's no, a bunch of them that are sick but i mean like the, a lot of people <laughs> who think they're getting added security it's just adding another non-trustworthy device to your yeah. chain just of use the monero signer and i mean the, 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 no go ahead but, Oh, I was just going to say that, remember, the all the government is is thieves that have uh, pieces of paper that say that they can do things. Yeah, and other other people in the same uh, group that say, oh, that piece of paper is valid. Mm-hmm. True. And, and friend, to the friend before you, uh, you know, the, the thing is that privacy sells. People actually care about privacy. They care about, you know, they always have. But if you sell privacy, it's not real privacy and people don't know then we get what we get but if yeah. people educate people and it, it also uh, is things change yeah it, it ruins trust and privacy you gotta wonder why ledger went this direction why wouldn't they just made like a if anything a completely separate product device that would do this and just keep biden covered. told them to biden told them to <laughs> I mean, it's he doesn't have that capability. Hi, hey. <laughs> hey. hey. show me a shirt. It's like, it's like, uh, you're, you're selling a hardware wallet. Thank you. So thank you for yeah, the that's shirt. Epic. You're that's selling epic. a hardware wallet, <laughs> and it was a back door, and they're like, "But no, it's, it's not a real back door because it's a back door is sold as a feature, yeah. Shards and it's going to different companies, which you can trust. You can yeah, definitely you can. trust. Do we even know the names of the companies? Yeah, I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, I think all the comp, uh, they they're probably listed on the website. I'm pretty sure it's public. Yeah, but you know, you know, you know my point, right? Who, who the fuck even are they? Yeah. Why should yeah, they I be mean, trusted just... with? Even if it's a, even if it's like a, a snippet of my seed, even if it's, I don't know, it's just so dumb. So, Cake Wallet is having a Monero meetup in Chicago next week, November 2nd, 7 to 10 p.m. It'll be featuring Justin Berman and uh, Luke Parker will give an update on Sarai. Awesome. So, if you are near the area, come by and you can RSVP on the meetup.com link up there. I will be yeah, there. I will see whoever comes. It's a few thousand oh, you're gonna be there. Right? Be there will, yes. awesome. Yeah, I wish we could go, but I, I can't. We're we're running our way to Argentina a few days later, and we just we got to be around here. Is, uh, is it going to be live streamed? I uh, think, I'm not sure. Question. I think maybe we can, maybe I'll, they will. I, I'll ask Vic. But I think Bert- it would be unforgivable if you can't find some way to live stream at least part of this. Like, I, especially yeah. like the Luke Parker part. There are a lot of us. Or very curious. So. Yeah, and I think yeah, I'll, I'll ask about that. Presentation on full membership proofs, I believe. I think. I believe. Oh fuck yes! I won't yeah. be surprised if they at the very least record it and upload it. Yeah. I feel like they have to do that. I'm. Uh, I'll ask. I'll looking ask. forward to uh, Serafis and Sarai. Yeah, because Berman's working with Luke. Uh, obviously, Luke is working on Sarai, but he's also, as you guys know, working on full membership proofs, and I think he's working on that with with Justin Berman. So I think. Yeah. Berman's be giving a talk on the progress that they've had on that work, which is amazing. Oh, good shit. I think people underestimate just how fucking cool Seraphis is going to be. Yeah. And full membership proofs. This is like... Yeah, yeah, no, that too. I mean, it's part of Seraphis, right? It, it's going to be part of Seraphis, is the yes. idea. Seraphis, yeah. No, we're, but we're talking so about Seraphis. Seraphis, my bad. No, no, this Seraphis is, is the... Is the yeah, Seraphis oh, is the, oh. the new Monero. Sarai is the, the Dex, yeah. Yes, and yes. So Hester Pierce speaks out against library enforcement action. The market could have decided. The SMEC commissioner said the regulators' actions forced a group of entrepreneurs to abandon what they built while library announced in October it planned to wind operations. This is all related to library, um, I guess, sort of losing a case against the SEC. Mm-hmm. And they've recently decided to shut down their operations officially. Hester Pierce of the U.S. SEC has issued a dissenting opinion on the regulators' lawsuit against blockchain firm library. In the activity statement. I'm sorry. 
Uh, in the October 27th statement, Pierce described feeling unsettled following the SEC's enforcement action against the library in March 2021. In November 2022, a judge ruled in favor of the SEC, stating that the firm's LDC token was a security. No uh, library uh, appealed the decision. The company announced in October it would uh, plan to wind down. What the fuck is he doing? <laughs> D-Marsh, you <laughs> came in. I thought, I thought I was being cool, but I, I wasn't cool, so I'm just going to shut up now. I just hear little blobs just in the background. Uh, yeah, they, they decided to, uh, they're shutting down, as everyone saw last week. Millions of dollars in debt due to legal cost. So the the case illustrates the arbitrariness and real-life consequences of the commission's misguided enforcement-driven approach to crypto. I don't think it's misguided. I think it's on purpose, but... Yeah, but like we spoke about last week, it's just forcing... Um library or the, you know the open source portion of it to become more more decentralized right yeah um, so it could end up being a good thing but at the same time yeah. we might see a little bit of development because like unless there's people who have the money and time to pick this up there's going to be some some amount of abandonment right yeah, that's always the problem with these smaller tokens right i mean the idea of a decentralized video platform is fucking cool but i don't i don't even think this is really the right approach if you ask me i think peertube does it a lot better where you actually host your own videos and you share that with people that want to watch it. I think that that's like actually decentralized because for, for, for a token like library that there has to be like a central, um, yeah, the, the whole, the hell of Fediverse thing is like clearly the superior way to do it. And honestly, yeah. I think we should use the Unix philosophy, the Unix principle, you know, we use these little features like the ability to tip in Monero, and then, you know, tip people who are hosting massive amounts of, you know, Fediverse operations, you know, which, by the way, Tux has a donation wallet, everybody, for <laughs> all of that incredible work that he's doing. I like Shameless that you know what the plug. Unix philosophy is, by the way. I'll ask well, him. yeah, it's, it's yeah. probably one of the most important concepts that has been nearly abandoned by the modern software and it, well, I'll call them software pleb because that's what they really are. Yeah. Even, even the congratulations, you know more than ninety percent of the population. Well, when do you learn something, right? Uh, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but the reality is, is the Fediverse system paired with a simple tipping function, like what Blin was doing, right, um, gives you the opportunity to. You know, you could put at the top of your list that your content would be hosted on somebody's, you know, roaring Fediverse server. Or um, if people are using that that uh, that video platform to watch your videos, they can either tip you directly as a content creator or tip anybody who's hosting your stuff. Um, and the exactly. performance gains over Google everything would be absolutely mind boggling. Like for those of you who don't know what the Fediverse is, it is truly amazing. It's basically uh, what Mastodon uses. Yeah. Ma Mastodon is the biggest example is basically everybody can host their own, um, Fediverse software, which can be Mastodon or Pleroma is another one or PeerTube or, uh, what was another one. And basically it can all intercommunicate with each other. So you can have an account on one server and you can follow people that have an account on another server. It's got it's sort it's of like cool. email. <clears throat> yeah, it's very nice. I always yeah, said I that Mastodon was basically if Twitter and email got together and had a baby, it would be Mastodon. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I host a, uh, a lot that of services, really weird but I don't have any uh, Fedder, um, Fediverse stuff yet so if you want me to host like a new pipe or a mastodon let me know i'll look into that they're pretty they are pretty complicated to set up they do require a decent amount of uh Storage setup to get started well. but uh, i think they're worth it because once you do get them set up um you can work with uh, and start fettering with other instances so yeah yeah you know supposedly if somebody was really driven to they could like send hardware to an amazon locker somewhere and you know some guy some little birdie might put together all kinds of cool operations just suggest you know like this right speaking you of which, there is a there is a lemmy server uh and lemmy is basically decentralized lemmy, reddit a, yes yep oh, it's yeah, basically town. That's decentralized the decentralized reddit and it's monero.town and there's already tons of people well a couple quite a few people on there and lemmy i'm one of them. is so much better than reddit by the way it's yeah. like 
It's like Reddit minus the filth. It's just so much better. This is ironic Reddit. because Lemmy, when it started out, it was developed by a bunch of very communist Communist, people. yeah. It yeah, depends like on a, the instance you use, right? No, like, yeah. like the actual was... developers of Lemmy, the Lemmy itself, one of the guys had like a Paul Pot profile picture and he had like a hard-coded list of words you weren't allowed to use on the platform. Yes, I remember that. that yeah, was and really there, there was like a fork Lenny uh, with, the, with the Lenny face that had it the... kind of patched out and stuff. The guys who host all of my Fediverse stuff, they're like diehard anarcho-communists that believe that we need a new Stalin for like a massive rise genocide. Up? Um, which, I mean, to each their own, right? But <laughs> Yeah, on, on the topic, by the way, I, I recommend everybody hosts their own website. It's not that hard to do. There's website, like there's plenty of resources on how to do it. Uh, landchat.net is one of the websites that perfectly explains that's mental how to outlaws isn't it <laughs> no uh luke smith i believe he paid with monero is, is that lets you buy a domain no 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 it, it it has a bunch of research on how to do it uh, it's just uh, resources for how to host a website but if, if you want to if you want to uh if you want a server that you can pay with monero there's 1984.hosting there's nyala uh njal.la uh, there's a bunch of others they all yeah, yeah look at Monero. look at uh, look at monorica look at monorica.com and they have uh they have a couple of web hosts yeah yeah or do the it monorica be truly America. decentralized because yeah, you but... could use a vps which might be better if you're starting off it'll probably be better for security not having open ports on your local network exactly. that, but that's if you why really want to get into hosting learn how to do it locally because that's truly decentralizing the internet instead of just yeah, and putting all this Tor stuff back on the same uh if, if your personal server isn't heating your baby's crib then you might not <laughs> what are you even doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's a good uh space heater for the winter yeah you, yeah you can just make, make I mean, it a tour what, site. Dovecot is, what is dovecot dovecot is an email server or like an email um like uh, something for your email client to connect to was there any more news? Because we got totally off topic. Uh, that was oh, it yeah, for the bad. news, it uh, looks like. <laughs> that was it, Shortwave. You said you had okay. something you wanted to bring up. Yeah, so just a quick project that I've been working on. One of the things, I've been using P2Pool for quite a long time, and one of the things that really irritates me is that the P2Pool Observer does not work well on a mobile phone. I'm sorry, but a lot of people use mobile devices to access the internet. So what I've done is at least I'm currently in progress of working on a P2Pool kind of observer client that works well on on mobile devices. And I've got a uh, I've got an actual mock-up of it. If you'd like to see it, I can put it in the chat real quick. Fuck yeah. 